I thought it might be interesting to compare the FOIL method to the BOX method for multiplying two binomials. Now, I've actually taught both methods this year, and a lot of my students like the BOX method, where I generally prefer the FOIL method. So I thought it might be interesting to look at the advantages of each one in a couple of examples. So here we have 2x plus 1 times x minus 5. So these are two binomials being multiplied, so we're going to use either the FOIL or BOX method. So on the left side of your screen, you see the FOIL method all set up, ready to go. We take these two first terms, that's the F in FOIL, and we multiply them and we get 2x squared. Then we do the outside here, the 2x times the negative 5. We multiply them and we get negative 10x. Now we're going to multiply the inside, which is the positive 1 times the positive 1x, and we get positive 1x. And then finally, the L in FOIL is where you take these two last terms, the positive 1 and the negative 5. You multiply them together, and you get negative 5. Now usually, on most of these problems, the middle terms combine, and we get a middle term of negative 9x. So writing the answer, it would be 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. Now one of the advantages of the FOIL method is that hopefully you can skip all this work and you can pretty much do it mentally and just write the trinomial answer straight away. All right, with the box method, here it goes. We take the two different binomials and we look at them as having the two terms. And we write the 2x up here and the positive 1 from that left-hand binomial. And then we write the x here and the negative 5 down here. Now what do we fill in these boxes? Well, that is the FOIL from the left side of your screen. So we take the 2x times the x and we write it on the inside of that box. So this would be the 2x squared. Moving down to the next box, we're going to take 2x times negative 5. We get negative 10x. Note that that was the O on the left side of your screen. And then we're, let's move up to the top right. So that's 1x times 1, and that is positive 1x. That was the i on the left side of your screen. And then for the l, we're going to take negative 5 times positive 1, and we fill that in the bottom right corner of the box. Now where do we go from here? Well, we just combine those two terms. They're often set up diagonally there. And we get negative 9x when we combine those two, and we bring everything else down also. So this is a really nice way to organize the material, I think. However, I get concerns that maybe students can't do all this work mentally like they really need to be able to do, especially once you get to factoring and you have to do this whole process backwards. Let's move on to a similar example. So x minus 3 times 5x plus 2. So on the left side, let's do the FOIL method. So we get 5x squared on the F. We get 2x for the outside, we get negative 15x for the inside, and we get negative 6 when we multiply negative 3 times 2 uh, for that L term in FOIL. Now note that these middle terms do combine, they become negative 13x. So we can write the answer 5x squared minus 13x minus 6. Again, I would generally skip all that work and just write the answer because I would juggle the O and the I in my head and combine them to get that negative 13x kind of while I'm writing the 5x squared. But that's just how my brain works and I certainly appreciate that some students really prefer the organization of the box method. So the box method, I'm going to put the x and the negative 3 up here. I'll put the 5x and the 2 down here. Now we just triangulate and multiply in the different cells, much like a Google Sheet or Excel spreadsheet. So 5x times x, that's 5x squared. 2 times x, that gives us positive 2x. Negative 3 times 5x, that is negative 15x. And then negative 3 times 2, that is negative 6. And you can see those two middle terms that are diagonal here, negative 15x and 2x, can be combined to be negative 13x and we bring everything else down and we have the answer. Very nicely organized work. Whoa, this one's really different, isn't it? We've got a binomial times a trinomial. Now certainly FOIL is out the window because we can't do FOIL. We actually have six multiplication problems we have to do with the left-hand method. So this is where the box method starts to be more attractive to me. So on the left side, we're going to take 2x times x squared, and we get 2x to the third. And then I'm going to take 2x times 3x, and that's 6x squared. And then I'm going to take 2x times negative 1. So I'm doing three multiplication problems right here in a row to get all those down. 
Now we look at that positive 1 and we're going to multiply, multiply, multiply with that as well. I'm going to write them down below. So I get 1x squared plus 3x and then negative 1. Notice how I lined everything up relatively well here and I can now add the like terms. 2x to the third plus 7x squared plus 1x minus 1. There's the polynomial answer for multiplying this binomial times the trinomial. That was a fair amount of writing, uh, and it's a lot harder to juggle that in your head. Let's see how the box method might organize our work even better. So I've got this set up so that the trinomial is going to go on the top here. It doesn't have to, but that's just the way I did it. And we're going to put the positive 1 down here. Now let's just go through, triangulate, and multiply, and fill in all the different cells. So 2x to the third. We've got 6x squared. We've got minus 2x there. And then 1 times x squared is x squared. We have 3x times 1 is 3x. We have negative 1 there. So now let's go through and combine like terms. We've got x squareds and x squareds here. So 6x squared and 1x squared is 7 x squared and then we have positive 3 and negative 2 is positive 1x. I'll bring down those extra terms minus 1 and 2x to the third and look at that we got the exact same answer as we did on the left side but I think the work was a lot more organized. What do you think? I'd really love to know down in the comments which method do you think is the best way to multiply. Maybe the FOIL method works better when you're multiplying two binomials, and in this case that you see on the screen here, maybe the box method is the way to go. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'd like to hear your opinion. All right, and before you leave, I have a favor to ask of you. Could you please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and that way you'll have easy access to all my videos and playlists. All right, until next time.